So even before the government triggered literal chaos into the UK housing market on September the 23rd, it was already beginning to show signs of creaking. Let's talk about uh, the Bank of England and what they've done in the last couple of days because it really is quite extraordinary. In a moment where we expected the Bank of England to step up and rate hikes, they're buying bonds. Guy, make sense of it all for us. Crucially, the figure to understand is how the property prices are dropping year on year. This is starting to show a slowdown in the property market. It slowed from about 9.5% on average down to 7.2%, so things are starting to go down. And in the past month alone, this has gone down by 1%. So it shows that the property market isn't crashing, but it is cooling down and it's about time. I don't blame you for being scared about the property market crashing and going down. We've got a looming recession, interest rates are incredibly high and it's the end of the help to buy scheme. This all isn't helping property prices. The problem is with the newspapers, it's all biased to their target markets. If the newspaper is targeting homeowners with large mortgages trying to sell, they want to hear that everything is really competitive and the property market is fine. For the first time buyers, they want to hear the doom and gloom so that they hope that property prices start to come down. So we need to cut through all of this noise. And the current slowdown is due to one major economic factor, interest rates. That is the one fundamental thing crippling prices right now. It's halved everybody's affordability and we've gone through an incredible boom period where we've been used to cheap interest, cheap repayments, which means everyone's affordability has been a lot higher, which has helped contribute to the inflation of property prices. But now mortgages are more expensive, our affordability has been cut in half. That means that people aren't willing to pay the same prices for the same houses compared to this time last year. And we can safely conclude this because this graph from the Bank of England shows the amount of mortgages by multiplier and income. So what you can see in the cyan blue color is that most people in the UK are maxing out their affordability at around four times their household income. And with such sensitivity to lending at the moment being so expensive, a lot of people are waiting to see if interest rates come down so that they can continue to stretch their finances on four or greater multipliers of their household income. This graph from the Bank of England shows the gross advances by the purpose of the loan. Interestingly, when you look at the data up to the middle of the year, home movers on the red line massively reduced by a third from almost £90 billion in mortgages in 2021 to about 60 billion a quarter in 2022. First time buyers also cooled down. But the yellow line is remortgages. With people realizing that the interest rates were going up, you can see this huge surge in remortgaging with people trying to get onto cheap rates before they go up, which shows that a lot of people right now, rather than panicking in a crash, are just hunkering down and staying put. Which now we've seen interest rates go up is a smart move for those who locked in early enough. A few months ago, buyers were fighting for houses, gazumping on offers and trying all sorts of dirty tricks. And the market has completely flipped on its head. It is definitely now a buyer's market rather than a seller's market, especially if you have cash or need a very, very small mortgage, you could be in for some seriously good deals. And this graph here shows the UK first time buyer mortgage payments as a percentage of their take home pay. With mortgage rates now at six to 7%, we're looking at mortgage payments taking up more than 50% of people's income. The worst we've seen in modern recorded history and affordability of wages to mortgages is worse right now than in 2008 and in the late 1980s. But remember that this is for first time buyers only. Nationwide's view on this is that the outlook is extremely uncertain and much will depend on how the broader economy performs, but they do acknowledge that a soft landing is definitely possible. Longer term borrowing costs have actually reduced in the past few weeks, and it may continue to go that way if investor sentiment in the market continues to remain strong in the UK economy. They acknowledge that at the moment there is a weak outlook, but we are in a good position. The labour market is definitely going to soften with higher unemployment, but we're starting from a really strong position. And we currently have unemployment rates at an all-time 
50-year low. Moreover, household balance sheets are actually in a really good shape at the moment. After COVID, a lot of people have more disposable income. And with over 85% of people locking in a fixed rate mortgage, a lot of people in the UK are currently protected from the issues we're seeing on the interest rates and people are just locking down and staying put for the time being. Unlike 2008, where banks were selling subprime mortgages to people who just simply could not afford them, instead at the moment we have a lot of people on fixed rate mortgages and are pretty safe for the time being. And that means that we won't see this huge ultimate crash next week. Instead, we'll see a bit of a small decrease as more and more people come off of their fixed rate mortgages. The interesting question is how long will the high interest rates last for? Because that will be the big determining factor. Now, yes, we've seen property prices drop by 1% in the past month alone, and that can be quite scary. But when interest rates are 6 to 7%, it does not take a genius to realise that actually that is the reason why the market is stagnating. Who wants to pay a 6 to 7% interest rate on today's house prices? It's an extortionate amount of money that people can't afford. Halifax's view, and this is quite cleverly worded is that the property market is cooling not crashing and that's totally right the property market over the past two to three years has been absolutely smoking hot the floor is lava it has been wild and we've specifically seen year-on-year -year growth in some areas topping 12 to 13 percent which is incredible the reality is this has to cool down at some point and i think this time is now but it's important to remember even though we've seen a one percent decrease in property prices over the past month alone in comparison, when you look at the wider picture, the market has gone up over 25% over the past two to three years. So 1% is still a small drop in the ocean compared to the massive gains that homeowners have seen over the past two to three years. They also acknowledge that unemployment rates are super low right now, which is good. That means people can afford houses, they can afford mortgages, but they do acknowledge that a recession is on the horizon. And with recessions means that unemployment rates start to go up. This will impact people's affordabilities and ultimately it will start to knock further onto property prices. So you don't need to be an expert to see that property prices are going to cool for the foreseeable future. The problem is nobody can predict the future and we don't quite know how far that's going to go and for how long. This graph is a prediction of unemployment with a high of 9%, an average of 6.5% and a low of about 4%. So the early warning signs are there of a looming recession, which, yes, will impact house prices as the economy and ultimately people struggle. So why do I think this will be different from 2008? Well, at the moment, when you look at the Bank of England's data on arrears and debts in terms of mortgages, and because we know that unemployment is at a record low, looking at this data on arrears, the first half of the year saw arrears actually go down. Now that's phenomenal for the current market. So when you combine that, with the fact that a lot of people have just fixed their mortgages onto cheap rates, even though they're really high right now, that means that everyone is delaying the inevitable and people are currently protected against any major increases in mortgage costs. But with a possible recession ahead, I don't think we're going to see this huge almighty crash. Instead, we're going to see this slow dip where people's affordability and earnings are slowly chipped away. Unemployment will definitely increase at some point in the future. So really right now it's a matter of just bolting yourself to the ground and weathering the storm. All the warning signs are there. So all you have to do is be aware now and start preparing for the next few years. So now we know that the main factor is interest rates causing property prices to go downwards. It looks like that banks have already factored in and priced in those peak rates because recently we've started seeing interest rates start to go downwards. Even after the Bank of England upped the bank rate to 3%, we didn't actually see that much change in the mortgage market, meaning banks had already priced in a lot of this risk. The Bank of England are actually so confident about this that they predict that inflation will drop just as sharply as it rose earlier this year. However, take that with a pinch of salt because this is the same Bank of England that predicted that inflation would be around 2% at the end of 2022. They are infamous for getting their predictions wrong. But the most important bit is that their conclusion believes that a lot of the upwards pressures impacting inflation are actually starting to go down and things are starting to stabilize. Overall, their current prediction is for inflation to start dropping after Q1 2023. So what does this all mean? Well, we're not going through a drastic crash just yet, but we are going through a period of cooling in the property market after it's been incredibly hot. A lot of homeowners are still massively up because of the property rises over the past few years, 
and people are sat on high amounts of equity. On the other hand, not everybody is doing well. The cost of living crisis and the energy bills is really hitting people hard, which means the best advice is to just hunker down now. And if you're on a fixed rate mortgage, try and sit exactly where you are for as long as possible to weather the storm. That's the key advice is get through these tough times. My personal opinion for the minute is that we're already pricing in some of the impacts due to interest rates already going up for those on variable mortgages. There is more to come and I'm sure we will see it, but I think 2022 is a very different set of circumstances compared to 2008. If you bought in the past few years, the reality is you're probably already up with the price of your property and the crashes aren't expected to be as big as the gains. Even back in 2008 in the UK, property prices only really dipped from peak to trough by about 15%. Bearing in mind that in the past three years, property prices have risen by over 25, if not more, percent. So the best thing to do now is stay exactly where you are, keep an eye on the market and make sure you can survive the monthly payments for the next one to two years. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this one here, which is whether you should buy a house now or wait until later in 2023. So click on this video here and I will see you in the next video.